Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. I'm such a big fan of your work. Thank uh, you. I mean, you, you've had 20 years of acting on stage and on film. I've loved everything you've done, and this is a new chapter in your life. This is your debut in directing. Yeah. Congratulations. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Let me, let me ask you, this. is it difficult to direct a film that you are also acting in? It is a little complicated. Yeah. Yes, I can imagine. Yeah. Cut me. <laughs> let me try that again. I was great. <laughs> exactly. How was that for you? That was pretty good. How was it for you? Not bad. OK. Let's... Yeah, um, you know, I was always worried about that. That right. was the one thing that I was really kind of stuck on as I was going through the process, and just to see how I would respond, you know, on the floor. You know, and the, I think the main thing is is just preparation. Right. You know, it's just preparing. I had a great team of uh, you know heads of department working with me. Dick Pope, an amazing cinematographer, Valerio Bonelli, an editor, and uh, who's terrific. Tule Peak production designer. So just working with that kind of caliber of person, you know, you feel that you have the space to kind of give it a go. You know? And you you definitely did give it a go. I mean, it's a beautiful film. That is based on a true story. Yeah, it's it's an amazing film. It's set in Malawi, and um, you actually bought the film rights to this book after uh, after you 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 read the book. Yeah. You read the book, and you were like, "I need to make this into a film." What did you love about the story? I loved the first thing that I loved was its optimism. You know, its hopefulness. There's, you know, the story centers on William Kamkwamba. Who yes, is 13 years old in Malawi. And, um, you know, the, his, his community is going through a famine, essentially, that's brought on by uh, intense flooding and then a drought. So they, and the government has turned their back on them, price of grain through the roof, and, um, you know, and they're in a massive short, shortfall for, yes. their, for their grain harvest. So uh, he's taken out of school. Secondary school isn't, isn't free in Malawi. He uh, starts sneaking back into the school. He ends up sneaking into the, into the library, and he finds a book called Using Energy, an American textbook. And on the front of it is a windmill, a picture of a windmill. Right. And so he starts using anything he can find, just any of the, just scrap metal, anything he can club together, and the book, you know, for the, for the science and technology part of it, to try and build a wind turbine that will, you know, um, irrigate the land, that will, you know, generate electricity. Right. And irrigate the land. And, and well, I was... Well, I mean, what, what's powerful about this is, on its own, that seems like an amazing story. And then you find out this happened in real life. You find out that William was a real boy. You find out that William genuinely snuck into school, which is mind-blowing. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> snuck into school to learn. I mean, I can't imagine myself, like, sneaking in to, like, double English or math or anything. Yeah. But, but this, this, was, this was what inspired him. And then he goes on to save his village you know, learning about sustainable ways to, 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 to get water for and his that people. was the moment that really changed everything for me in the book as well, is thinking of what my relationship to school was when I was 13. Right. You know, whether it was conceivable that I would be trying to, you know, sneak past teachers yeah. to get into the math class, you know, and just realizing, no, it's not conceivable. And that, the privilege of that, of my dynamic, you know, understanding the situation of this boy and thinking, that would be an amazing story to try and get out there, you know, what the circumstances and this kind of, you know, him living in the solution, basically. Him trying to organize and find the solutions to the problems that he's facing and the challenges that he's facing in this really positive way. What I, what I really enjoyed about the film as well is that many people shoot films in, in areas that are different to where the story actually took place. It's oftentimes easier, but you chose to film in Malawi where the story takes place. Um, I think you found like the places where William actually grew up, you know, the, 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 the school, the, 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 the house where he lived, the, the, the same world that he was in. And what was honestly the most impressive, and we saw it a little bit in the film, is that you learned one of the Malawian languages, I think it's Chichewa. Yeah, yeah, Chichewa, yeah. You, you learned a new language for the film. Yeah. And you act in the language. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was, I mean, this is, yeah. There's, there's authentic, and then there's authentic. I mean, this, like, you really respected and wanted Malawi to be front and center in this. Why was that important for you, and what do you think it added to the film? Well, you know, first of all, I wanted the film to feel incredibly authentic, to feel like um, a sort of teleportation experience. Mm -hmm. I wanted to take the audience into this space, you know, Alice in Wonderland, down the rabbit hole, here we are in this hole. And I wanted to tell the film from the 
point of view of the people who experienced it. Right. You know? I really felt like, for, you know, we often see these films and we sort of step outside and we often film films like it, you know, they're telling the story of these hardships or struggles or, um, you know, these kind of difficulty and challenges and we're outside of that perspective. But what would it be like to take an audience inside that perspective? Yes. You know, to invite an audience into the private spaces of people and their lives when they're undergoing these kind of these highly stressful, difficult situations, but finding a way, a way through. So I felt like a way to do that was to just kind of embrace the authenticity, to go right into Malawi, to be in all of the actual locations, but also to learn to chewa, to, you know, to try and really encapsulate their experience and, and tell the story from, from their perspective. Uh, let me ask you this. You, 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 you're creating this film, you're telling the story, you have this community, you have this vision for what you're trying to achieve. There's something very specific that you did in the film, and that is you used sub subtitles throughout. You also have the people playing between languages. There are moments where people are speaking in English, and then they switch into Chichewa, and then they come back into English, which for anyone who speaks multiple languages is one of the most authentic ways to speak a language. That's not an easy thing to do, and I can imagine some people would doubt it and be like, hey, why don't they just all speak English like Somali pirate type vibes, mm. you know? <laughs> why are they switching? Because it's a lot easier to do, but, but you had to make that choice. Why? For the, for the authenticity, right. really. For that sense of really being, being in and of that, of that place. And, and that was one of the things I loved. When you're, in, when you're in Malawi, that's what happens. You know, people speak English in certain circumstances. Yes, they yes. might speak English at school. They might speak English in uh, places of work or speaking to members of a different tribe, obviously, right, where right, the language right. isn't common. So th that all happens. And then people at home, in their intimate communities, in their family dynamics, are speaking to Chihuahua. But sometimes, especially with younger people, that slips into a little bit of English yes, and then into Chihuahua. Yes, yes. And I just wanted to capture a bit of that because that felt very authentic to me. It felt very real to me. I think it happens all over the world, by the way. Right, you know, right, people right. do that. And people in the UK, you know, if, they, if their families are from Europe, somewhere, Italy, Spain, France, you know, people do that at home and then they speak in different languages and so people really related to that sort of bilingual capacity to the film and, um, you know, so it allowed me to introduce that kind of authentic element to the storytelling. You, you have an amazing story that you've told. Um, it's a fantastic debut and I was really fascinated and, and pleasantly surprised to find out that William is still going. Oh, yeah. He's still in energy. He is now a grown man. I think he works between one of the Carolinas yeah, and North Carolina. North Carolina and still Malawi. Yeah. Has he seen the film? He has, yeah. I mean, you know, he's seen it a couple of times now and he's really excited by it. I mean, he has a kind of, you know, it does take him back into a, into a you know, traumatic time right, of, his, right, right. of his young life. And even though it has all this energy and hopefulness and positivity and he himself has all of those things, you know, it is that kind of a balance of right. remembering this very stressful, you know, difficult time. But, um, but the resolution to that is, is profound and, and positive, you know. So, um, you know, he's a wonderful guy. He has this, uh, he's building an innovation center now in Lilongwe, the capital of yes. Malawi. And it's really about empowering young people to, you know, to identify the problems that they have in, the, in their communities and find ways of solving those problems right. themselves with the help of a wider community, you know. And that is very empowering. It's very strengthening. It's really what his legacy and his journey is and what, he did in these extraordinary circumstances and you know like I say it's about it's about living in the solution I think we all have a lot to learn from the William Camquambas of this world definitely, you know definitely especially in the face of you know climate change things like this is what put this community under so much stress in the first place you know so um, you know he's a wonderful man it's a wonderful story that you've told uh, fantastic job acting in it as always and congratulations uh, I think we're gonna be seeing a lot of you behind the camera my friend thank, thank you. you for being on the show the boy to harness the wind, premieres in select theaters and on Netflix March 1st. Chiwetel Ejiofor, everybody.